their lives the way they did, the way you do. Leaders do not influence historical events that much. History does not change its course with the death of a revolutionary leader. Eighty of us landed in Cuba in 1956. There are only 12 survivors now. But Cuba has been freed, freed. And thousands of new leaders have to replace those, those leaders, those who died. Only 12. Only. <laughs> only. That's a remarkable percentage. Don't forget that we are little men fighting against <clears throat> great powers, against, a great, against great money, church, powerful armies, against the selfishness of those who own practically nothing. I believe they are defending their privilege, their properties. Still, a leader's duty is to avoid danger and death. It's his duty to survive. Oh, goes right. This is welcome, provided that our battle cry reaches more receptive ears than another hand stretches out to take our weapon. For instance, your case. In Bolivia today, we are surrounded by hundreds of soldiers. Well, get out. I'm sure. But, but suppose we don't. Suppose they capture you. If they place a revolutionary like you in the dock, your trial would be a, a, it would really be earth shaking. You could use the Bolivian courts as a tribunal for, for a devastating indictment, not only of, of Yankee imperialism, but, but, but also of the barbarity of the, of the Barrientos of the regime and, and their servility vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the CIA and the Pentagon. <laughs> che Guevara on trial. Not allowed. Would not be allowed. Not allowed by whom? Washington. It's not the first time that you, you reproach the Communist Party for not be, believing in the armed struggle, for, for being too democratic. Look, look, they let me join you. <sighs> when asked whether or not I am a Marxist, my position is the same as that of a physicist or a biologist when I ask if he is a Newtonian or if he is a Pasteurian. One ought to be a Marxist with the same naturalness with which one is Newtonian in physics or Pasteurian. Suddenly we hear some shots. They immediately get their arms and take cover behind a rock. Bullets begin to whistle. They begin shooting. Suddenly, they are surrounded. Coco advances and shoots in that direction. Pacho, to protect Ramon, throws himself on his body and starts shooting towards the, the shoots. Coco disappears. A direct hit breaks the barrel of Ramon's M2 rifle. Another one hits his left leg. Pacho frantic drags Ramon and hides him behind a rock. Pacho keeps shooting even though he is being hit again and again. Your rifle. Give me your rifle. No, Jay, no. Let them. A child is better. Let them put you on. Pacho dies clutching his rifle, his body half covered with Ramon who is weaponless and wounded behind a rock. Ramon desperately tries to take Pacho's rifle. He does not succeed. The lieutenant officer with a green beret, Paco, Beno, and two more Bolivian soldiers enter. They have captured Coco. <coughs> they push him down. He falls. The lieutenant lifts his face. He studies him, trying to identify him. He indicates Coco's face to the officer who is checking through <coughs> some pictures. He gives one to the lieutenant. The lieutenant nods and proceeds to read what is written behind the picture. Coco, Robert Pereira Legay, born in Trinidad, May 23, 1939. A militant in the Communist Party of Bolivia from the age of 11. 11? What a precocious genius. He later was in charge of the youth group of the party and then director of the regional committee of La Paz. He went to Cuba in 1962 and Russia in 1964, returned for the second time to Russia in 1965 and to Cuba in 1966, trained as guerrilla in Cuba and Vietnam. <clears throat> Maybe you met him there. At the age of 14, he worked uh, in the gold mines in Tupani and Brunei. Other occupations, sailor, alligator hunter, taxi driver, guitar player, etc. We can skip that. Uh, married in 1960 to Maria Alchuza. Three children. 
What beautiful names. Tell us, come on. The oldest is six. What's his name? Roberto. Got my name. I accept that. The next one is four. What's her name? Gatti. And the youngest one, the three-year-old. What's the little angel's name? Yuri. How exotic. Russian names. But so unoriginals. Unoriginal. Traitor! The lieutenant looks at the officer for an order. The officer knocks. In the name of the Bolivian government. He pulls the trigger. Coco is killed instantly. The lieutenant goes over to see if Pacho is dead. There is no doubt that he is. The lieutenant, to be sure, fires one last bullet. He is suddenly aware of Ramon's presence. They all point their weapons at Ramon. To their amazement, Ramon is unbelievably calm. In a matter of, in a matter of fact manner, he is nursing his wounded leg. Where is your gun? You're very lucky. I directly smashed the barrel of my gun. We're lucky, I know. I see you're wounded. It's nothing. Very superficial. Who are you? Ramon de la Selva. What's your name? You are... Ramon de la Selva. You are Che. A revolutionary. You are Che Guevara? That's right. One of the many. Che! <laughs> Alive! Alone! To die with dignity is not necessary to have company. <laughs> See, John F. Kennedy said, U.S. Steel and other leading steel com corporations increasing steel prices constitute a wholly unjustifiable and irres irresponsible defiance of the public interest. The American people will find it hard, as I do, to accept a situation in which a tiny handful of steel executives whose pursuit of private power and profit exceeds their sense of public responsibility can show such utter contempt for the interest of millions. He was murdered. A very modest classroom in the two-room schoolhouse in the mountain village of La Higuera. It is dark, <clears throat> since they must depend on a few small windows for light. There is no electricity in La Higuera. Ramon is lying on the table. He is handcuffed and looks on with some curiosity at the three Bolivian soldiers who are now showing off their souvenirs they took from his knapsack. Noticing that they are puzzled about the contents in a small red box, in a calm, kind voice. That's our journal. Padre, what? Something to eat? No, no. It's medicine for my attacks of asthma. You have asthma? At times. My tío has asthma. It's an old viejo's disease. How old are you? 39. You're right, I'm, I'm old. Oh. Only a few revolutionaries reach my age. You have asthma, senor? Senor Rivera? And you have chosen this difficult life? It's a calling. They say, if you saw a child in the water, on the verge of drowning, you would jump in, instinctively, to save him. I see millions with water up to their necks. I forget my asthma and plunge into the water. Into the fire, I say. Into the fire, if you like. Some drown, some burn alive. And the asthma doesn't choke you like his uncle. Sometimes he becomes all red, as if you were going to keep the bucket. He happens to me too, and now and then. But the duty of a revolutionary is to fight for justice for you and for your families. Poor people, they exploit it. Let me ask you this, how much do you earn what in the army? Mean? What do you mean? How much do they, do they pay you a day? Food and bread is bread free. Uh, it helps my mother who couldn't afford it, though, afford to? To feed you? I don't know. Don't be ashamed of that. One must never be ashamed of being hungry. It's not your father's or your mother's fault. And they promised us money if we kill. And he means if we capture rebels. We'll get paid, though. The price for my head is many thousands of dollars. Thousands of Yeah, try to get it for yourselves. If it fails into the hands of your cardinals, you will only be given a few crumbs. Thousands of Yeah. The dollars? <laughs> the last I heard, it was 10,000. You, the soldiers, should organize a good union and divide the money among us. <laughs> <laughs>